Future Proof is sponsored by Learn Smart Academy, online revision courses for GCSE and A level. All your revision in one place, organised for you, interactive and game changing. Hello, welcome back to um, Future Proof. Thank you for joining me for this second programme as I look at the art of delegation. Please don't worry if you missed the first programme, then uh, you can find uh, copies of these, all these programmes that I've been doing, all the series of Future Proof on um, YouTube. So do search it and, and the headings are uh, quite um, clear if you like covering what uh, the content of the videos are so you can go and 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 click around and and go and find it but also latest TV are very very good at uh, rerunning some of the program so you can always pick it up next time so but I will if you like give a slight overview of the first program and basically and look at I love this picture here you know delegation are you sure that it's easier to do it yourself and there are many people who are frightened of delegating for many different reasons. It could be that through their career they were never ever delegated to. Maybe you had to work very very hard to get to where you are today. No one seemed to delegate, give you a if you like helping hand or give you scope to grow and learn within a business and sometimes if, if we didn't have those opportunities ourselves we want to repeat that to um, people who are below us and just say look I had to do it the tough way, you're going to have to do it the same way. And there really is a very, very strong business case that says that it won't, that thinking won't serve you and it also won't serve staff. You know, as younger members of staff are coming in and they're working up senior roles, they are expecting to move much more quickly than many years ago. And they are looking for people to invest in them and to enable them. And if you've got bright stars in your business that you are making work a little bit harder to climb the ladder, then be careful because if you're not talking to them and investing in them, then someone else will be. And and, you know you could end up losing out so you know just be careful with that thinking and just make sure that you you switch on the enabling mind the uh, activating DNA if you like to say legacy and contribution it's very important to me that when I'm not in the building people are speaking me up they are saying um, that I help them, I enable them. Um, I, I and one of the things I was talking about just towards the end in the last program, permission to fail. If people are so frightened that the you know there's going to be an earthquake if there's any kind of mistake, then they won't use their creative thinking and they won't give it a go. They'll just keep coming back and checking the whole time with you, and that will perhaps endorse in your mind, oh for goodness sake, I might as well do it myself. But it could be what's holding them back from actually having a go and running at it is possibly you may not have a delegation process in place but also the fact that um, they are just so worried that if they make a mistake then the consequences just won't be worth paying and so having a process in place can uh, break the overall job down into bite-sized tasks you can then have a reporting back sequence that can really help and in that the person can feel the confidence to have a go and they might actually run the process in a slightly different way to yours and you might look at it and go oh my gosh this can save us you know um, an hour a day by doing it this way rather than the old way that we did it so there's a lot of opportunity for learning as well and I did talk about the business case and just to say briefly here this is about looking at how can you impact your profit and loss and get leverage from the capabilities and resources that you have to the job that is being asked to be done and through the delegation process it's saying how can you leverage in other words um, 
have the highest fee possible that, that fits with the core values of the business, where it costs the business as little as possible without cutting anything out on the job that's being done, and also enabling staff, training staff up, so that as they were, are doing this job that is earning you more money, they are being enabled to, to climb the professional ladder that they want to climb. And so it's a massive, massive win-win because always remember staff will not work very, very hard if it's only to line your pockets because they are sat there thinking W11, W11 FM, what's in it for me? And if they can't identify it, what's in it for them, then they won't, number one, work as hard, but also they won't share some of their learning um, and also maybe some of their creative thinking. And what I was also saying is this is a picture of the scales at the bottom of getting the leverage out from what it's costing the business to what is brought in on the business. And on the right hand side, delegation will enable you to grow and it will have an impact on your profit and your losses. So, um, and obviously we're looking at profits, profits, profits. Also, we were saying delegation, make sure you do it proactively because if it happens in crisis, that's when, if you like, many balls can drop and, you know, you can really find yourself in sticky water. And go uh, just finishing off the last program i was just saying make sure you keep a trail and that can you know evidence um, learning can take place from that trail also if there's a query um, if there's an investigation of some sort then you can show what decisions were made what communication took place what the findings were and what happened with all of that information so make sure that you keep a trace and then i've said it a number of times um, delegation is not abdication and uh, that's really really important you could you can abdicate you can abdicate once the person is teaching someone else if they're teaching someone else then you know that they know um, whatever you've been delegating to and they know it inside out and backwards and it's only once somebody is teaching it or even get them to do a presentation on it to double check what they know then you can let go completely so how to delegate? First of all, identify the tasks and make sure that you can articulate it and in a way, if you can even draw a picture of it as well, that really, really helps. And when you are identifying the task, then make sure everybody has an, everybody who's impacted by it has an understanding of it. So um, I'm thinking maybe in the manufacturing world, you know, you might as, as head of department have an idea of delegating something. Just make sure everybody who is um, impacted by that change of role and what is going on understands what is being delegated, um, how is being delegated and then what impact will that delegation have on their role within that process. So um, it could be then a question to say, oh, um, so does the person you're delegating to, do they know that actually um, I, uh, my eyesight's very poor so they have to ring me with any information? That has to come through the phone, not email. So it's things like that. You know, if you don't involve the whole team, that is a ball that could easily be dropped where somebody could be reporting back. It's all by emails, um, believing everybody understands, but they don't, don't know that there is a need somewhere where a particular person needs it delivered by phone, not email. It's that kind of stuff. So make sure the whole team is involved. Decide who to delegate to. And this is about... Um, there's different criteria to that. Don't automatically go to the same people. You know, it could be that, and it's very easy to do that, particularly if you've already been delegating somebody who's learning the ropes really quickly, you're having confidence in them, which is giving you more freedom, it's reducing your stress. If you're not careful, you could end up delegating everything to that person. And I'm thinking when I've worked with secretaries before, you know, there are some secretaries who were frightened to death of being absolutely excellent and superb at their jobs. Because what happens is a massive trust builds up and it, particularly if the other secretaries aren't as good as them kind of idea, then this poor soul who is so good working hard, maybe, if you like, effectively gets dumped on because anybody and everybody wants to delegate to that person person because of the trust and what have you but there's two things happening here number one they might end up with an inappropriate workload 
because they they're being over delegated to and also that other people are not being invested in in the same way that they should be and the last thing i want to say too um is and and this comes from war stories this comes from staff if you like complaining when i've done assessments and i've gone in to help sort out some problems where people have said more than happy to do it but i just haven't been given the time to do it and i've referenced this when i've talked about project teams before it's really really important that if you're going to delegate if you're going to set up a new initiative like that make sure you give people the time and space to go and do what you want them to go and do because again if you don't do that then the error the chances of errors escalates unnecessarily so and the last thing we ever want is for you or anybody else to turn around and say I knew I shouldn't have delegated I told you it wouldn't work and uh, it basically it's an I told you so story do all you can to avoid I told you so not unless it's about success